Hello, everybody. Um, today's class is about newspapers. Um, I want to make sure I'm getting feedback from you guys. So always fill out your three things I learned, one thing muddy or confusing after every lecture. That's very useful for me to see what's working and what ain't. And please do the survey about the class if you haven't. A lot of you have. And I'm getting some very useful feedback, so do that too. And then we're going to talk about newspapers. And uh, we'll talk about what's due before the next class. Next class is magazines. The class after that is the midterm. Okay, so let me know what's concerning you if you have any things that are confusing. Uh, again, fill in this, uh, the assignment for three things I learned. One thing, money or confusing. Do that every week. It's on Blackboard. And uh, fill out the class survey, please. Newspapers. Kind of says what it is. <laughs> it's about news. And it was originally on paper. This is a shot of uh, two gentlemen uh, reading their favorite newspaper in Israel. Um, Israel is a very vital uh, newspaper country. Uh, the population is keenly interested in the politics of the day. And there are a number of daily newspapers in which they can read about the politics of the day and other things. And also see ads, like the one on the page this fellow on the right's got. I can't read Hebrew. Uh, those of you who can, uh, tell us uh, what that ad's about. Looks like some kind of local retailer with a sale. Uh, so this is uh, what we're going to talk about regarding newspapers. What is it? What's it like to read one? Um, two major kind of distinguishing factors about newspapers are that they are the source of a lot of investigative reporting, which is something that's vital for any society, which is why the freedom of the press, specifically the press, as in the printing press, is mentioned in the first addition to our Constitution, the First Amendment. And I'm also going to make the argument that uh, newspapers are defined by its by content, news, information, not by how they are distributed, uh, because more and more, of course, they are moving to online. And online newspaper is still a newspaper. Uh, we'll go over the history. Uh, it wasn't a paper, but there was news made available uh, very quickly uh, to citizens of Rome. Anyway, and we'll, we've talked a lot about Gutenberg, and newspapers came along not too long after books were printed. And we'll switch over to the U.S. Newspapers were the primary mass medium in the U.S. for decades and decades, probably longer than any other mass medium has been the sort of uh, king and queen of uh, society for decades. Uh, going through a lot of changes today, as is anything that's printed on paper. Uh, we'll talk about the players, uh, the fact that there's a lot of companies buying a lot of other companies, and then we'll have some final thoughts and talk about the future. Hope that's okay with everybody. Um, newspapers, what is it? So, our theme for today's presentation on newspapers, if, uh, if you'll allow me to have a theme. I read the news today. Oh, boy. <laughs> that is, I see there, there's a, 
quotation mark missing here. I don't like that. I'm going to change it. Um, I don't know if you know who's sitting, semi-sitting, semi-lying down on this little couch. That's John Lennon from the Beatles. Um, this would have been, it looks like Sergeant Pepper time. That's what his hair looks like. Um, this was his favorite lounge in his house uh, in Kenwood. Uh, and he loved to lie on that little small couch there. And he read newspapers voraciously. Uh, watched a lot of TV also. Was very into what was going on in the news. And then wrote a song in the famous, famous Sgt. Pepper's album, which came out in 1967. The song was called A Day in the Life. It's the last song on the album. It's a very famous song. Paul McCartney wrote a kind of middle section. It ends with one long chord that goes on, hit on a piano that goes on for quite a while. Uh, a Day in the Life, the first line in A Day in the Life is, I read the news today, oh boy. And that's what newspapers are about, reading the news and saying, oh boy. And mostly on a daily basis. So, um, what is a newspaper definition? Remember, by the way, Marshall McLuhan from one of our earlier classes saying the medium is the message, meaning we shape our tools and our tools shape us. So what, what as a tool, how do we describe a newspaper? A couple of things. Uh, the original format is, again, print on paper. Um, newspapers relevant for one day. Um, the phrase, yesterday's paper. What happens to old newspapers? They end up after the day that they're issued. Um, well, a lot of them are recycled these days. <laughs> You'd be glad to hear. Something like 70% of paper newspapers are recycled. Um, they end up at the bottom of bird cages. I'm going to play this in the background. It's a Rolling Stone. You saw the Beatles and I see the Rolling Stones. Not nice. There's Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, like a magazine or a book that can lie around in somebody's table or in a library. You don't see, I mean, yeah, there are mic there are newspapers in libraries, but they're, they're, in the old days they were put on microfiche. Um, anyway, they're good for a day. There's some pass-along readership, but since it's only good for a day, not, not too much. Um, the format, again, on paper is it's text with pictures or illustrations, and there are lots of pictures. There's usually at least one picture for every article in a newspaper. They just kind of, you know, choose a picture to illustrate it. In terms of how the newspaper is organized, and again, I'm, well, this has to do with online and print. Um, the stuff that's on the first page at the top, is perceived as being the most newsworthy. Um, there's a sort of cynical phrase about uh, 
the most newsworthy being uh, the, about accidents and things like that. If it bleeds, it leads, is a phrase applied to newspapers and what goes on the front page. Um, newspapers developed different sections for different content, daily papers, so you'll have a national news section, for example, national news section, a metropolitan news section. Maybe one day a week you'll have a section on food, uh, etc. Different content goes in those sections, and those sections appeal to different parts of the audience, and so advertisers, since newspapers um, were the first medium to take ads, um, advertisers can appeal to different audiences based on what section they go in. Um, interestingly, again, in terms of content, um, you can follow a story in a newspaper if it progresses, as it progresses, as it builds. Um, you know, every day it'll have new revelations, potentially, about uh, if it's a case of investi investigative reporting. And the story may move around the newspaper. It may be the front page for a few days, and then it just kind of fades from public consciousness, and so it may appear deeper in the sections. So stories develop over days, and its place in the story can move in terms of where it's placed in the paper. It does require a high level of mental engagement because you're having to picture things. I mean, you're not watching a video uh, with a with a printed newspaper, certainly. Anyway. Um, so you've got to engage your imagination and your and your brain to kind of you know picture what's what what's being described by the words. Um, process of reading and buyer's creator involves creation of mental pictures. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. Doesn't want to let me go here because of the song. So let me do this. Um, so moving along in terms of the definition of a newspaper, this is from Merriam Webster, Miriam Webster Dictionary. A paper that is printed and distributed usually daily or weekly that contains news, articles of opinion that are supposed to be marked as being opinion, and they are in newspapers, features meaning informational stories about different things that may not be the daily news but are nevertheless something that would interest the audience they hope in ads. Okay. So reading a newspaper which this lady is doing at some kind of outdoor cafe with a cup of coffee. I don't know where she is. Maybe she's in Paris. I don't know. I can't really see the print on that paper to see what language it is. Um, and you also, these days, we read newspapers um, on our phones. I have a subscription to the New York Times. I look at it every morning. I look at it on my little laptop, but I also read the news on my phone. If I'm traveling around uh, the city, I'll just, I have an app for the New York Times, and I'll read it on. And it's a very different experience, of course, if I read it online versus reading the paper version. But both of those experiences involve using imagination. Um, I'm going to stop now, and I'm going to share this. In addition to, you know, video and, and, and print and text, their newspapers have become very creative in terms of how they show their content. It's a hybrid kind of thing that they do on their online um, in their online version sometimes. They don't do it with every article, but they kind of get immersive uh, using um, animation and maybe some video and text and you kind of move through it and I'm going to stop and then I'm, I'm going to I'm going to show you this um, and uh, it's a nice piece that ran in the New York, ran in the New York Times. 